Traditional winter walk up day. Paul breaks out the side by side, sniffs some fruity paper cases, and enjoys a forest pheasant fry up. Oh, amazing. I'll get that in aftershave. Bloopers. Lockdown made 2020 <laughs> interesting, but we've still had lots of fun bringing you the best hunting and shooting. <laughs> Air Gun Evolution, our latest field tester show is out now, celebrating ancient and modern. Oh, oh you useless man! <laughs> <laughs> the perfect stocking filler for the animal extremist in your life. We expose a Hunt Sab's terrorist handbook produced by British Antis and now in the hands of the police. We have news, we have hunting YouTube. Welcome to Field Sports Britain. London, made in Great Britain, six sharp. We're going to keep oh, yeah. this really simple. AYA, side by side, random retro shells, a game bag, Duke the dog, and lots of walking. Yeah, this is a nostalgia day. Yeah, basically, yeah. It's like the old days. So I used to do it quite a lot when I was younger. I'd go up to Wales, woodcock shooting, grouse shooting. Um, and they had quite a lot of grace there actually at the time. We'd go out and shoot, probably three of us would shoot 15, 20 in a day, walked up. Um, so yeah, it's, it's good. So we're after. Come on, Jackie. We're not doing the middle, we just did some boundaries. So we got up on the edge there, it's a nice bracken, a um, couple of young plantations there. <laughs> we'll, we're shooting odd pheasant if it's, a, if it's a good pheasant presents himself. All the vermin species, obviously. I'm trying for a woodcock. That's why I got the paper case cartridge. So. That's what we used to do when I was younger. We used to go to Wales and walk up all these little small valleys with the bracken and uh, we'll cock and snipe and then go back down to the estuary for some ducks. So, uh, yeah, it's a bit of a reminisce of the old times. <laughs> with lockdown restrictions, Paul hasn't been shooting much. Today he fancies blowing away the cobwebs with some fresh air and the smell of paper cased cartridges in the morning. Perhaps I shouldn't be using these, you should be putting in the archives. This one's pretty common though, that's a smokeless one. So is that with a dust shot? Maybe I won't use that one. I'll keep that one separate. I'll ask them before you use that. Well, I'll carry on with these. Where did you get these from? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, over the years I've sort of been given cartridges and collected a few cartridges and maybe I should keep them, but maybe I should enjoy them. You were talking about the smell of them before. You'll see in a minute, it's quite cold, frosty morning and the smell of a paper case cartridge. Hopefully they won't smell all musty and horrible, but you see. Good boy. Good boy. David misses Good the boy. first flush completely, but Paul has a pheasant and his first hit of shell smoke. Ah, oh, amazing. I'll get that in aftershave. Smoky bloke. No, it's not like smoke, it's gunpowder on a frosty morning. <laughs> yeah, okay, I'm weird. <laughs> there's, a, there's a good bit through here, and when we get to that um, larch, tall larch as well, there's a place there, it's only 30 yards, you've got a good chance of getting a woodcock there. And then we're going to the, the plantation, needle in the haystack in there, but we'll try it anyway. So. Good boy, Duke, 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 Duke. Get over, get over, get over. Yeah, Duke. Psst, psst, psst. Get over, get over. Good boy, good boy. Get in, get in. Yeah, on the edge of a bracken. <laughs> Easy. Get in, get in, good boy, good boy. Good flush that was. This is a field, field trialer's dream, this is. <laughs> it is. What's that? Want it, Jack? <laughs> ah! Miss! First wood cuck. I was on the dog. Yeah, <laughs> Let's look at the action replay. <laughs> Smells good, though. That was rubbish. Did I not say they were just here? <laughs> Two seconds before. Where did the munch went? Sorry. Munchak <laughs> went back through here. Pheasant went through there, and a woodcock went straight through yeah, this and tree. Yeah, the dog went that way, and then I filmed the dog. <laughs> I knew I missed. Maybe he was poking, not swinging. Oh my goodness! Is that Charlie Chaplin? Chaplin cushion. Hmm. Any of your favourites? No, I was loading one day and somebody had a load, so they give me a couple. What was that? 
1993. <laughs> Not that long ago, to be fair. That's probably 15, 20 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, woodcock. <laughs> Good boy. Oh yes, that's a practice, it's a practice. I don't need, yeah, I could have had him, but he's a uh... good boy, good boy. Exciting, isn't it? exciting. I don't want to carry him. <laughs> no, I've got a big old heavy Byzanti in here, so. Woodcock, Woodcock's next. Come on, Duke, find me Woodcock. Good boy. That was a good one. Oh. Did you get him, David? Yes. Did the job, didn't it? Very nice. Very good. Chaplin. Want to go to Chaplin? Chaplin, that bunch up, Buck. Good boy. Yay. Good boy. Good boy. Paul would normally do 10 walked up days a season with clients, but the COVID boy. pandemic has put a stop to that. As well as the sport, he finds these days useful to get to know how the wood is behaving. It's amazing how felling a wood or thinning a wood changes the, like, the dynamics of how the wood runs and how the birds move in the wood, how the deer are in the wood. Good way to like, start reading the wood again. So. Seven shots, smokeless. They yeah. may be antiques, but they work, aren't they? Oh, they work all right. Yeah, I, I mean, beyond, I had them stored in a in a bad place, and I wouldn't use them. But these have been stored indoors and looked after. So, like I say, warming them back up, doing a treat. So, right, just going to find a woodcock. Yep, let's see up there. Oh yeah. Good boy. Good job. Yeah. <laughs> Good boy. Young squirrel. Fillets there, David, for you. Too <laughs> <laughs> kind. We've actually changed shells then. I changed to these. So these are the young bloods. These we've got from we've gone from antiques it, to these are still quite bankers. quite retro though. Look at the old stamp on the end. Yeah. Early Grand Prix. Mm. Eco steel. Thirty gram fours. They work, don't they? All this walking means we are building an appetite and it is time for lunch. Paul has come prepared. So David, um, how do you want your fillets? Do you want fillets at the back or do you want the uh, haunches? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or pheasant. We'll have some pheasant actually. But, ta-da! Oh, look at this. Oh, I found in my bag. Oh, some onions. Look at them. Oh, look at that. We just forage for those. Yes, and some little herbs there, some salt. And... I didn't see us get that. That was yesterday's uh, hunt. Okay. Oh, my mouth is watering. <laughs> you thought we'd have some dry oil sandwiches. Oh, <laughs> there's your bit. In true barbecue fashion. Cool, that is good. <laughs> <laughs> One for you, two for me. Oh, look at that, eh? Oh. <laughs> How can anyone not like this? Try that, shall we? Where is he? Where is he? Where is he? Cool, good one. Here's two, look. Go on, Duke, kill him. Good boy, Duke. Yeah. Good boy. Yeah, good boy. That's no woodcock. Substitute. Do you like duck? Yeah, I like duck. Yep. Duck breast in the pan. That would have been lovely dinner time. Oh. Lunch time, what do you want to call it? Perfect. 
Right. Calling it a day? Yep, we'll call it a day, I think. Good finish. One for one. <laughs> the old steel did the job. Did the job today. No pressure, no hassle. Had a walk around the woods, see what it was about. The elusive woodcock got away, which is good. That's what it's about, isn't it? It's not, you know, it's about having a bit of a challenge, otherwise, hence we're using paper cartridges with an old side by side, which I ain't shot for a long time, so. That's what makes it a challenge, so. Oh, good fun, right. Let's head back. I'm actually going to head back out and uh, do a duck flight this evening, if you're interested in coming. No? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, <laughs> no, come on, let's do it. Thank you, Paul. Very romantic. Now, if you want to find out more about the 65mm Eco Wad steel shells designed by Ely for old shotguns, Tony Bromwich explains more on our sister channel, Field Tester. Field Tester is a hunting kit resource platform just for you. So please subscribe for all the latest reviews. When you're trying to get that all important cheek weld, in the last week, we've published films from the likes of Chef Mike Robinson on the gear he can't leave home without, and James Fowler from Ruag shows us the Bergara rifles he doesn't just sell, but owns and competes with too. Next year, this is going to be my go-to rifle, and we're going to win some medals. <laughs> <laughs> right, from fonts of knowledge to a fondant fancy, it's David on the Field Sports Channel News Stump. This is Field Sports Channel News. Countryside Alliance Chief Executive Tim Bonner has slammed UK council bans on trail hunting as sad. Councillors across the country have been debating banning trail hunting on council-owned land. After the release of a webinar, animal rights activists claim exposes the activity as cover for actual fox hunting. Cherwell District Council in Oxfordshire, however, threw out a proposed ban on trail hunting. Other councils, such as Peterborough, have upheld temporary bans, even though they don't have any land that could be used for trail hunting. Bonner says the council's actions are nothing but grandstanding and should have more important things to worry about in the middle of a pandemic. There isn't a single yard of, of uh, land that's owned by Peterborough um, City Council, which is hunted on by, by any of the local hunts. Uh, it's grandstanding in the, in the most blatant way. Celebrities are coming out accusing the BBC of encouraging puppy farming. This comes after plans for a documentary championing the business savvy of people becoming dog breeders during the lockdowns, which have seen dog prices soar. Paul O'Grady, who has appeared in dog-related television shows, says BBC Three is irresponsible for its documentary about young people breeding puppies for profit, according to Pink News, which says Peter Egan and Jan Leeming were doing that. Puppy prices have skyrocketed, with working dogs going for nearly £3,000. A petition calling for BBC Three to scrap the project has got more than 200,000 signatures. The corporation insists, Will My Puppies Make Me Rich? is only a working title, and the programme is based on sound journalism. Anti-shooting campaigners have called an end to shooting at the Queen's Sandringham estate. This comes after an owl was accidentally killed in a trap on the 20,000 acre Norfolk estate. The legal fen trap is used to catch rats. Embattled wildlife celebrity Chris Packham questions whether the Queen should be running driven game shoots, suggesting they're not ecologically ethical. Norfolk police says no offences were committed, so there's nothing to investigate. A well-known Welsh farmer has been banned from TikTok for a video about a dead pheasant. Gareth Wynne-Jones says it's an attack on free speech and it's important people realise where their food comes from. He questioned whether TikTok would take down videos of frozen chickens bought from supermarkets or a big fat turkey he's planning to eat on Christmas Day. He cooked the pheasant and says it was beautiful. Here's his message to the social media giant. Uh, very frustrating and when people ask the question why society don't understand where their food comes from, it just tells you everything. I think we need to fight back show people what real food is all about and start banging the drum for British agriculture and getting the message out there. Sabs are celebrating after stopping a shoot in Hertfordshire. During a lull in shooting, they interrupted guns, some of them teenagers. Their Facebook post ends with a link to a PayPal account where followers can send them money for their hard work. One commentator on the post accused the police of turning a blind eye to legal shooting. 
Denmark will be digging up millions of mink after an unnecessary cull caused by a coronavirus scare. Bloomberg says Prime Minister Mette Frederiksen did not have legal authority to order the cull of the country's more than 15 million mink. The dead mink will be dug up after a six-month wait and skinned, enough time to ensure the carcasses are free of the virus. After a four-year campaign, the United Nations has recognised the importance of the hunt trumpet sounders. UNESCO has labelled the music and skills needed to make it as intangible cultural heritage of humanity. The application for recognition was submitted by hunters in Paris on behalf of France, Belgium, Luxembourg and Italy. Highland Ericsson, one of the four founders of the Safari Club International, has died. Ericsson was the first president of SCI Chicago, which joined together with the Los Angeles chapter to establish the current organization. SCI said without his contributions, the club would not be what it is today. He was president from 1974 to 1976 and is famous for accusing CBS news reporter Dan Rather for smear tactics used to attack hunters for a fake news documentary in 1975. Ericsson was 81. And finally, invasive Burmese pythons could be hitting the dinner tables of Florida if scientists say they're safe to eat. Snake is a popular dish in parts of Asia and is said to taste like chicken. The Florida Department of Health is checking whether mercury levels in pythons are low enough for diners, according to CNN. Pythons are non-venomous constrictors that have wiped out native wildlife in parts of the Sunshine State, as we highlighted a few weeks ago after a whopping 18-footer was bagged by Kevin Snakeaholic Pavlides. The Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission encourages residents to humanely kill pythons when they can any time of the year and to report any sightings to officials. You are now to date with Field Sports Channel News. Stalking the stories, fishing for facts. Have a very happy Christmas. Thank you, David. Now, Mr. Wright is not just presenting news these days. He presents our field tester show too. <laughs> As well as being a YouTube channel all by itself, Field Tester is a monthly TV show about the kit you use. This new one is all about air guns, from antiques to add-ons to pellet choice to the current laws about what you can shoot in your garden. It has a guide to last-minute stocking fillers for the shooter in your life. If you are the shooter in your life, send the link to Father Christmas. Of course, Dave is not as good as me, but Roy and Johnny Muston save the day. It's fun, so watch it. Talking of fun, here are some of the gaffes and giggles we've had in 2020. Ah, cool as a cucumber. Ice cold. <laughs> and often they're not too bad. Although as you smell just, just over here, there's some very, very old. And as I said to you, you know, the most important thing, I can't give any more advice than that really, but... As a shooter, I've eaten an enormous amount of lead. Is there anything wrong with me? <laughs> That's a, a good question. Um, from the lead or from... <laughs> sorry, sorry. Let's start with the lead, before you, before you go personal. <laughs> Um. <laughs> you don't even want to kill him. <laughs> Maybe smile. His face looks like he's not real, does he? <laughs> Have you been spending time with Kai? No, <laughs> with Roy and Becky. <laughs> Put some effort into it. Oh my god. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no! Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> But that's okay, we'll, we'll just have to, um, if he finishes slamming doors and banging gates, we might stand slightly more of a chance, but... Yeah? No? Yeah. Is that alright? Yeah, do it sure. again, though. <laughs> no, no, because you, Dave is filming you. Go on, trot up there. What, the yeah, trot up, go on. <laughs> I hate to be youthful again. The smaller it is, the more you appreciate it. <laughs> Sliced it up on top of some scrambled eggs. <laughs> no. That's your story for life. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> having been in a sauna with you, I know that's not true. <laughs> Can I see it? I didn't actually see it. Where is it? Ah. It's just like an extra piece of neoprene sticking out of your pants, <laughs> of your bottom of the... Did the French have special sizes? Uh, yes. Reason! Right, so I need to turn around, don't I? <laughs> that end goes first. <laughs> <laughs> Very impressive green screen bluebells behind you. You like that? I, I was very pleased. I thought of all the things I could put in front of me or behind me, <laughs> that's possibly the most neutral. Well, I, I, it's okay. It's just every time you move, you get a sort of slight um, kind of alien glow around your head. So you'll need to. Yeah, well, if you, if you watch very carefully, if I move my head to the top, you'll see that I'm being pulled up by aliens. <laughs> what do you think of the stand then? I think it's looking fantastic. I think it's going to work really well. And I can't do this. <laughs> <laughs> if you're behind him as we're stalking around this afternoon and you see him start flicking, that's him giving up. <laughs> yeah, no, just get, film it as he's going around. If he does start playing on his phone, we're trying to stop it, the habit. Shut up. <laughs> right. first, but did you notice the lady with um, the camera lady? Look at how dirty she is. Dedication. Yeah. Obviously yeah. lying on it. David didn't do that. No, he doesn't do that. No. He doesn't do He's not dirty <laughs> like that. No. <laughs> I'm going to go over to him and say, you're dirty. <laughs> I managed to order um, all those books in 24 hours from Amazon Prime. Not bad. <laughs> that is seriously greasy. Do you want donations? Uh, huh? Donations? <laughs> donations. You are now to date with Field Sports Channel News. Stalking the stories, fishing for facts. I'm not going to tell you what that reminds me of, <laughs> but it's not purple. Because when you touch your tongue into the top of your mouth, you immediately stop breathing. And she called it, I think it was the golden touch. It was basically, you, it sounds... <laughs> <You're so laughs> I, bet, I bet it wasn't. I bet I'm going totally wrong. Hi, David. Hope you're doing well. Okay, David is not doing well anymore. I'm the one who's going to get the abuse. You will get the abuse, I do hope you do. You, you deserve it, especially after putting a picture of me looking like a minion. Well, looking like Jab of the Hutt, according to some viewers on last week's episode. So. Nothing to do with me! Nothing to do with you! No, no. Deny everything, Baldrick. Yeah. No, cheers, mate. I'll give it a go, but if it yeah. don't sound good, though, you have to cut it out. All right. It's more of a... Oh, no, it's nothing like that. It's, it's... It's like, this is like Spank. Is it Spanks? Where women wear just like hold everything in? <laughs> <laughs> You are watching the Field Sports Channel News. This week. <laughs> right, shut up, but it. Shh. It's dear. Be quiet. Look. Take this seriously. I've got the headphones on, I can't hear. What? Hey ho. I'm glad I'm a farmer and not a. Lover. On that as well. <laughs> um... I'm a lover, not a farmer. Yeah. I'm a farmer, not a lover. I did. So Sorry. A, a fighter, not a lover. I'm neither. I'm not, I don't fight. I'm a lover and I'm a farmer. Stop. Stop, shall we? Stop. 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 And seeing my willy again after all these years has been phenomenal. So. Oh, <laughs> Thank you to everyone involved in putting our shows and films together. We are blessed with working with some amazing people who all want to present British and international field sports to the world in the best way they can. Right, gear change. News editor Ben has dug into the world of animal rights and discovered a new publication that is nothing short of an animal rights terrorist handbook. Animal rights extremists have been busy this year, smashing up butcher shops, destroying traps on estates and persecuting gamekeepers until they quit. Websites like Unoffensive Animal catalog the carnage, subtly cheering on attacks on businesses involving meat. Butchers are a good easy target because we can finish at night and go home. And the stories in there of, of smashing window. I mean, it's childish, childish stuff. You can see this is people's livelihoods and this is, you know, jobs. At the same time, it's suffered setbacks. Police forced its website and another animal rights website, Innocent Badger, off UK servers for illegal activity. Unoffensive Animal has come up with a low tech solution to state censorship paper. Issue one of a new printed magazine, Wildfire is a terrorist's handbook, 
showing how to smash traps in the windows of butcher shops, release livestock and chop down high seats. Former Metropolitan Policeman turned investigator Ian Jensen says it harks back to the animal rights movements of the 1980s and 90s. Once you've got a magazine like this, you're beholden to no one and when you read it, it does actively talk about committing crime. It is almost a manual on how to commit uh, rural crime. You know, some of the drawings and some of the discussions in it about how to uh, identify the traps, how to disable them, i.e. smash them to pieces, fold them up, jump them down on them. And you can see the diagrams on them, how to do it. It's not the sort of thing you're going to find in a dentist or the doctors, is it? Pick up the table and have what of a read of that. There's a particular section in there that has a, bit, a pictorial uh, explanation of how to go out into the countryside, how to pull down uh, high seats and how to come back and not get caught. And of course, the first one is leave your phone at home so that you can't be tracked or, you know, later on in life, if people look at your phone data to see where you were at the time, there's no, there's nothing, the phone can't prove where you were. One chapter claims readers can shut down the game shooting industry for good. I think it's really interesting that in that magazine they talk about targeting game farms because if we can target the game farms, that's a supply of birds to the industry. If we target them, then the industry falls apart because there's no supply. There's no point in going knocking down a pen and, you know, standing in front of people with their guns when all you can do is knock off the supply of it. There was, um, I think on Frieda Brock's, wasn't it? Um, or in a St Badger website, there was a list of um, a map with loads and loads of game farms identified on it. Tim Bonner from Countryside Alliance plays down the threat but recommends caution. We've got to be careful that we don't give oxygen to their campaigns and simply buy into this and start running around the place saying, oh, this is a nightmare. Everybody hates us. They all want to do horrible things to us. Because they don't. You know, fundamentally, they don't. You know, there, there are not very few people who care, care um, uh, you know, with, with any passion about banning us from shooting pheasants or chasing foxes. But there are a small number of people um, and, and they can be uh, dangerous both in physically but and both in terms of the actions they take. Um, so we've got to find this balance, this difficult balance between not um, over-promoting uh, the, 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 the campaigns that are carried out by the extremists but on the other hand taking due care and precautions to ensure that, they, that the few people who are involved in these activities don't have um, a really fundamental impact on our lives. One of the more disturbing chapters in the magazine encourages its extremist readers to carry out their own vet care on animals they steal from farms, labs, abattoirs, etc. So I think they like to give out a narrative and a story of, I don't know, taking a monkey or a beagle that's had half its brain removed and you're rushing it to some benevolent vet friend who's going to stitch it up and it's going to live in your bedsit or your squat for the rest of your life, you know, and it's going to live a fantastic life because you're going to care for it. I think that's, that's just a, a narrative they like to generate and I think it's one that makes them feel warm and fuzzy inside. These people are just wildly irresponsible. The one thing that I would say in their favour is that they clearly know that what they're going to do is liable to go wrong and cause harm to the animals they're attempting to handle. But I think they want to perpetuate the myth the animals in the in the farming industry and particularly animals in the um, pharmaceutical industry are poorly treated. I mean, it may well have been the case once upon a time, but it certainly isn't the case now. Certainly the kind of laboratory animal work that I'm familiar with, although it's not something I've actually done myself, but I'm familiar with it through my regulatory work, involves treating animals with drugs very commonly at double the recommended dose to monitor the effects. Um, usually there are none. Some of the advice would be comical if it weren't for the fact animals are in danger in the hands of amateur vets. For example, how to keep them warm. There are times when animals do need to be warmed up, but um, I've never come across anybody whose expertise was in animal husbandry to recommend putting them down your shirt. That's the kind of thing which makes me think that it's been written by somebody who has the ability to use his imagination and think of things, but has little or no practical experience of caring for animals. 
Clearly, if the authors thought what they are doing is legal, they would show their faces and put their real names by the articles instead of online nicknames. This isn't a fictional book about people committing crime. This is a manual. This is a, you know, there is advice and guidance given and encouragement given to go and commit crime. So who is behind it? An offensive animal prides itself on anonymity, but releasing the magazine has exposed the people behind it. On the back of the envelope sent out is the address of the printer. Google that and you get a rare find. A printer that doesn't want to advertise itself in the same unit as a vegan clothes shop run by someone who has appeared in court for trespassing during a raid on an abattoir. We have passed this information to the police and will follow the investigation closely. We will let you know how the police investigation into that goes. And we produced an annotated version of the PDF that we've given out to the Field Sports Nation, plus the media, MPs and the police for some light Christmas reading. Who are the Field Sports Nation? They are our happy band of now 800 supporters who back us with subscriptions and share purchases, and you can join them. The easiest way is to go to fieldsportschannel.tv slash offer. This week, I'm delighted to welcome new supporters, David Randall, Sarah Goody, Simon Beacom, Edward Walker, and Chris Robinson, who joined via the website, and Grant Sims, Mike Dower, Dewey Benjamin, Chris R W one Keith Fell, Dave Howell, Jamie Bloomfield, and catty favourite, Wayne Martin, who join on YouTube. Thank you to all of them. Now it's recipe time, a delicious winter warmer venison sausage rolls made by a man who has just started out in the world of game food. I've mixed the, uh, the venison and the beef fat up in here already. So to this we're going to add our game changer seasoning, just in on top. I've had a nice little play around with either venison or, or pheasant. I like to add the beef fat to the venison because it just helps to sort of enhance that richness. But I use pork fat with, with pheasant. And then it's just a case of picking whatever flavours you like. I quite like an onion sort of base. And you can use sort of some chutneys and things to put in there. Some homemade chutneys really go well. And mum's always proud when you use her chutney and something. We've got a bit of Worcester sauce, which just sort of brings out the flavour and adds a bit more depth into it. And we probably, we've used about 20 ml of, of Worcester sauce. So it's not a lot, but it just adds a bit. I didn't cook a lot when, with mum when I was younger, but it was when I got to university and I had to cook for myself. And a friend and I were the only ones out of six of us in the house who had ever sort of cooked game before. So we thought, right, we'll, we'll introduce the other four to some game. Um, and within that season, we got 150 birds off the local shoot and just had a really good play around. I started making sausages, did some goujons, did some roast, just had a really good play around with it all. I just thought, why don't we do this on a bit of a bigger scale? So at the moment, I'm using egg as a binder. In our, all of our products, we use gluten-free rusk, which, again, just from experimenting and playing around, I realise doesn't change the taste at all, but obviously adds that gluten-free benefit. Just whilst you're at home, egg is a really good one, just to nice and easy to use and a bit easier to get hold of, obviously. So it just helps to keep everything, keep everything together and bind that fat to the to the meat. Obviously, venison being as lean as it, as it is, the egg just helps to hold that fat into the meat. When you first put that egg in, it's, it's sort of almost quite sloppy, so you want to mix it right in, and you'll feel it start to bind together and almost start to stick to your hand. We haven't got any, any today, but um, a really nice touch is just to sort of smear some chutney onto the pastry beforehand, and you get that sort of coating, outer coating of chutney. But we're just gonna grab a load of this, roll it up in our hands, and just place this one in the middle of the pastry there. If you make it too thick, it becomes quite hard to roll. Roll and just press it all together. Uh, this is just the Just Roll pastry. That get home in a real supermarket. I mean, I think it's absolutely perfect for doing anything at home. Um, puff pastry works really well with sausage roll because obviously when it's in the oven, the meat expands slightly and the, sort of pa the puff pastry just sort of holds it all in. So, a bit of egg wash on the side that you're gonna fold over, which just helps it stick together. Just a light coating down the top of the meat. And this is sort of easier with, um, with cold pastry because it doesn't quite sort of stretch too much. We're just going to pick it up, quite simply, roll it over the top. Yeah, so we're stretching the edges and we're just going to use the end of the fork just to sort of crimp the edges there. And then all we're going to do is finish it off with a bit of egg wash on top. There we go. Now if you want to cast up, 
really good tip is just stick it in the freezer for five minutes, even less than that, and it'll just sort of harden up a little bit and make it a little bit easier to cut. Put them in the oven at 180 degrees for 25 minutes or until they are golden brown. And while they cook, Jack explains a bit more about the business he started this year, the Exmoor Game Company, which supplies pies, cooked game meats and, of course, game meat sausage rolls. I wanted to try something a bit different um, and, and not follow the rest of my peers to London and everything. Um, I love the countryside. I love being out here. Um, and, yeah... More misty mornings like this, it's just, it's lovely to be out and about. And so I wanted to bring that into something that I was passionate about. Our sort of mission statement and, and ethos is really, like a lot of people have said, make game more accessible and affordable. But I think we're approaching it from a slightly different area. We're much more focusing on social media and uh, when we can, get out there and, and talk to as many people as possible. Um, with a focus on primarily accessible products, sausages, burgers, sausage rolls. So we've been hugely surprised at the sort of uptake of it. Our sort of biggest following at the moment on Instagram is actually the younger generation, which is, is brilliant. But we've got, yeah, all sorts from, from shoots to people trying game for the first time to sort of the 16 to 25 year old market. I think we had two orders go out to the University of Bristol this week, so that was absolutely thrilling. For more about Jack's products, visit the exmoorgamecompany.com. If you want to buy Jack's sausage rolls, you can go along to his website. Now, from a misty morning on a shoot in Somerset to the wider world of hunting and shooting on YouTube, it is Hunting YouTube. <laughs> This is Hunting YouTube, which aims to show the best hunting and shooting videos that YouTube has to offer. Thanks to Mark Catherall, who sends me Fair Game Pursuits latest. They are on the pheasants at Port Elliot in Cornwall in this new episode. Lovely aerial photography shows off this beautiful estate. Adam from the Pest Above the Rest channel is dealing with a fox problem on a chicken farm with his 22250. One big dog fox down later, one happy chicken farmer. Thanks to Tim Roche for sending it in. I haven't shown anything from Hunter's Vermin for a while. He has been putting out regular air gunning films from Northern Ireland. This one is about decoying wood pigeons. Mika Kyle Zommer from the Walt and Wilt channel in Germany sends me his latest. He is out during the Red Rut in the Little Carpathians hills in Slovakia. Good film, incredible roaring and no German language needed. Thanks to Gareth Morgan and his five-year-old daughter Molly who watches Field Sports Britain every week. Ah, oh, that's lovely. He recommends this festive film from last year about shooting turkeys in the USA which has had nearly 8 million views. Happy Christmas Gareth and Molly. More exotic sport, Chris, Raddy and Mitch from South Island rifle walkers from New Zealand are on a 10-day trip to Stewart Island for both deer hunting and diving. Here's the Australian deer problem. National broadcaster ABC Australia makes this film called Meet the Ferals. There are no native deer down under and here is how each state is gradually moving the animals from a game resource to being a pest. And finally, our video a couple of weeks ago with Wayne Martin showing a stunning shot on a squirrel attracted attention from YouTube's catty gang. Among them is the man behind this Australian channel, Mr Slingshot Obsession. That's it for this week. I have put all these films into a playlist for you, click on the i symbol top right or check this film's description. If you have a YouTube film you would like us to pop into the weekly top eight, email me the link charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. And that's it for this week. If you haven't done so already, please pop over to our website fieldsportschannel.tv. You can click the like us on Facebook and on Instagram. You can follow us on Twitter, subscribe to us on YouTube, and best of all, pop your email address into our register page and we'll contact you about this show, Field Sports Britain, which is at 7 pm UK time every Wednesday. And this has been Field Sports Britain. Good hunting, good shooting, good fishing and happy Christmas. Yeah.